Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're a female professional or entrepreneur who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone, and a very warm welcome to episode number 42. Today I'm talking to you about journaling, or what I call self-study. Journaling, or self-study, is simply the practice of observing, questioning and curating our own thinking and the emotions our thoughts create through writing. Now, if you're in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, then I am pleased to let you know that we will be diving deep into self-study practices, journaling practices, starting next week, June the 1st. I'm going to run a self-study masterclass and then invite you to join me in a 21-day self-study challenge so that you can help yourself create a self-study or journaling habit and start to see the impact that daily journaling will have in your life. If you're not in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, then why not join us for June? It's one thing to be passively learning from these podcasts, but when you join the Academy and start to actively apply what you learn to your life because you've got lots of support to do just that, you're going to see great results. Find out more at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash academy. So let's dive in and explore journaling. One of the things that distinguishes us humans from other animal species is our ability to observe our own thinking. Our thoughts underpin who we are, what we do and what we create in our lives. And having the ability to choose our thinking is a human superpower but many of us aren't aware of our thoughts, let alone tapping into our ability to use our thinking to proactively help us become more of who we want to be and create more of what we want in our lives. Journaling can help you create a better relationship with food and lose weight. Journaling can also help you do things like let go of perfectionist thinking, let go of regret about things you may have done in your past, learn to accept or even love your body, uh, figure out your life purpose, improve a relationship with another person. Journaling can also help you to learn to love your job, help you to reach a new life goal and so much more. And there's scientific evidence to support the power of journaling too. According to a study conducted by Harvard Business School, participants who journaled at the end of the day had a 25% increase in performance when compared with a control group who did not journal. Another study by Cambridge University found that journaling helps improve well-being after traumatic and stressful events. Participants asked to write about such events for 15 or 20 minutes resulted in improvements in both physical and psychological health. And a study by the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that writing focused on positive outcomes in negative situations decreased emotional distress. And journaling has been found to improve sleep as well. The Journal of Experimental Psychology found that journaling before bed decreases cognitive stimulus, rumination and worry, allowing you to fall asleep faster. Now, whether you love journaling already or you've never tried it or you actively avoid it, I encourage you to make journaling a non-negotiable part of your day. If you are overeating, self-sabotaging or feeling out of control when it comes to your weight or any other area of your life, the sources of these problems will be your thinking. You must identify the thoughts that create the feelings that result in the undesired actions of overeating. You may have heard me mention previously that I'm a causal coach. That means that I help you figure out the cause of whatever problem you have in your life, whether that problem is having something that you don't want, like excess weight, or not having something that you do want, like your dream job. Journaling is you empowering yourself to be your own causal coach because you will be figuring out what's going on. It looks at you being the captain of your own ship that is your life journey, rather than floating on the ocean in a boat drifting wherever the wind takes you. Now, if you're resistant to journaling, ask yourself why. Is it because you're too busy and you don't have enough time? Or is it because you don't like writing? Or because you don't think that you can do it? Or because you think your eating may be linked to a previous life trauma and you're scared to face it? Or maybe you just find it too painful to focus on yourself because you've got into a habit of being self-judgmental and self-critical. 
If you know you avoid journaling for any of these reasons or any other reasons, then I encourage you to meet yourself where you are at and let the reason you don't want to journal be the focus of what you work on when you start journaling. Remember, your thoughts about journaling are your thoughts. They're sentences in your mind. They are not the truth. You're in charge of them and you get to choose whether to listen to them and not take action or to talk back to them kindly and journal anyway. So if you think you've not got enough time, then I encourage you to consider how journaling may be the equivalent of the woodcutter who stops to sharpen his or her tools whilst their colleague woodcutter carries on chopping away with a blunt axe. Or if you think you don't like writing, I want you to ask yourself why. Is it because of something a teacher once said to you when you were at school? Maybe a negative comment about your handwriting or a criticism of your lack of punctuation or imagination. Be curious. Why don't you like to write? If it's because of something someone said to you as a child, then know that you can let go of that now. You can choose to think differently about it. You can give yourself the permission to be the writer that you want to be. And if you're not wanting to journal because you find exploring your thoughts and feelings uncomfortable, then take the time to ask yourself and understand why. If it's because of a past trauma, then I want you to know that it's your thoughts about your trauma today that are causing you negative emotion. And if they are there, they are there whether you explore them or write about them or not. When you explore them, you start to gain authority over them. And when you have authority over them, you have the power to change them and to give yourself relief in the present. And if you don't want to journal because you don't like seeing your thoughts because you judge them and feel bad and think they should be different to what they are, then you're going to have the opportunity to learn how to be more curious and compassionate with yourself and learn the skill of stepping out of judgment because, well, there's just no upside to it. We sometimes think that being critical of ourselves is a way to ensure we change for the better, but I promise you it doesn't work that way. It's change that comes from a place of understanding and self-love and compassion that tends to be the change that sticks. And if you're someone who doesn't want to journal because you don't believe it will work for you, then you have the opportunity to see this belief as a thought, not the truth, and to shift your mindset into the belief of possibility. It's possible it could work for me. And experience for yourself that you have the power to create change and positive outcomes and more of what you want when you change your thinking. And let me remind you how this is a critical part of weight loss. When you're wanting to lose weight for the last time, you need to create an entirely different relationship with food. Now, your relationship with food is going to be dependent on your relationship with yourself and your relationship with your life. The relationships you have with food and yourself and your life are based on or underpinned by the thoughts you have about food, eating, yourself and your life. And when you think more thoughts that are aligned with having the relationship with food, yourself and your life that you want, you create what you want in these three areas. And journaling will help you increase your awareness of your default thinking and change that thinking to create that for you. Because when you get those thoughts down on paper, it's easier to see them. It's like you've grabbed hold of them rather than having them elusively exist in your head. Okay, so what else do I want to tell you about journaling? Well, little and often is the key. I want you to think of journaling as a daily practice. Five minutes every day is going to be more valuable to you than an hour once a week. Whilst you may occasionally have an aha, if you know what I mean, journaling moment where you discover something that changes your thinking forever and gives you pretty instantaneous results, most of the time change is going to happen slowly. You're going to want to practice your new thinking for some time until it feels like your new truth. For example, if you are someone who believes it's wrong to waste food and that eating it, even when your body doesn't require it, is not wasting it and is better than putting it in the bin, then you may be able to see how this thinking isn't serving you and you can see that other people don't have the same belief and you may decide that you also want to believe that putting food in the bin is no more wasteful than putting it inside of a body that doesn't require it. But seeing that and wanting to believe it for the first time doesn't, at least for most people, mean that you immediately adopt that new belief. Now don't get me wrong, some of you will see the opportunity to think differently and it will immediately stick. But for most of you, it's likely that you will continually forget how you want to think about it and default back to the behaviour of eating everything on your plate, especially when you've done this for years or even decades. You're going to want to catch it when you revert to your original way of thinking and gently and persistently remind your brain that the thoughts, the sentences in your mind are outdated and now you're choosing to believe something different. When you continually do this and when you allow your brain to resist 
and serve up the reasons why it doesn't want to change that belief. And you talk back to your brain, you talk back to those reasons by writing it all down on paper. Then you will slowly start to believe the new way of thinking that is going to help you going forward. So you may be wondering, exactly how do I go about journaling? What do I write about? First, I want you to know there is no right way to journal. And secondly, there are probably hundreds of ways that you could approach it. But right now, I'm going to give you six suggestions of ways that you can start to incorporate daily journaling into your life. Number one is what I call a simple evaluation of what worked, what didn't work, what you learned and what you will do differently. Now, if you're in my membership, you will know that I encourage you to do this daily to evaluate how you've been eating, thinking and feeling. And I encourage you to do it fortnightly in terms of evaluating your food framework. But you can apply this simple questioning process to anything in your life. If you've taken up exercise, you can evaluate weekly by asking yourself what worked, what didn't work, what did I learn, what do I want to do differently next week? You can also use this simple questioning method if you're working on improving a relationship or managing your finances, or working at being more organised, or working at managing your time in a way that works for you. There are so many opportunities with this one. It is really simple and really effective. Number two is the thought download. This is simply free writing, whatever comes up for you. So I encourage you to start with asking yourself something like, how am I feeling? What am I thinking about? What's going on for me right now? And then continue to write and explore what you write and question what you write to uncover more layers of whatever is happening for you in the moment of whatever is going on for you in your head. Number three is a suggestion of future focused journaling. When we want to create something new in our lives, the more time we spend thinking and feeling as if we already have whatever it is that we want, the more likely we are to achieve it and or the quicker and easier it will be to achieve it too. When we become the person we will be, when we have that goal already, it becomes easier. Future focused journaling can help you do just that. Number four is problem solving. When you feel stuck, when you're facing a problem and you don't know how to resolve it, problem reveal journaling and problem strategy journaling will help you direct your brain to finding answers or solutions that you were not previously able to think of. If you join us for the journaling focused work inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy in June, you will get a specific set of questions to help you uncover the problem with any challenge and find solutions to help you move forward. Okay, so number five is journaling specifically to help you achieve your goals. When you focus on your goals every single day, you're way more likely to achieve them and journaling can help you do that. Again, join the membership in June for tips about how to do this really effectively. And number six is super thinking. The way that I help my brain reveal its super thinking powers is by asking it super thinking questions. These could be questions like, what can I do today that my future self will thank me for? How can I have an amazing weekend without overeating? I will be sharing a plethora of questions to help you uncover your super thinking in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy from next week for 21 days in June. So do come join us. Okay, so let me just say a few things about setting yourself up for journaling success. Number one, make it a non-negotiable. Remember, journaling will save you time, not cost you time, when you use journaling to help yourself manage your time. Number two, make journaling enjoyable. Sit down with a delicious cup of coffee or tea. Find a peaceful spot in the house. Burn a diffuser or candle. Cuddle in a blanket. Use your favourite pen or a beautiful notebook. When you make it special time for yourself, it becomes something you want to do rather than another thing you tell yourself you could, you should do because it feels like a chore. Number three, life happens. If you find that you've not journaled for a few days, don't give up. Don't be frustrated with yourself. Just go right back to it. No drama required. Okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you about journaling today. If you would like to know more, then join us inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. When you enrol before the 1st of June, you will also get a special gift from me and you'll be invited to attend the journaling masterclass that I am running live. And you'll get 21 days of daily journaling prompts and suggestions too. I can't wait to have you join us. Take care and have an amazing week. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to be your coach. There are two ways that you can work with me. You can join my monthly membership program, My One Life Academy, that gives you self-paced learning supported by twice weekly live calls and a whole lot more. Or you can join the waiting list for my next six month 
Lose Weight, Live Life, Group Coaching, Mastermind Intensive. Go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching to find out all the details.